over nearly the entire history of Palantir being an investable company. The only thing, the only thing the shares of the company have done is pretty much gone down. Now, over the last five months, shares of Palantir have been absolutely rocket emojis to the sky. And the noobs, the Tom Nash cult followers, the people with Robin Hood gold and are over leveraged are starting to line up their next yacht purchase and maybe their yacht master Rolex as shares of Palantir have absolutely skyrocketed over the last year, up over 83% in year to date as shares of Microsoft and Google and Amazon and Apple are up 50, 60, 70%. Well, I tell you what, folks, if the shares of Palantir did not go up in lockstep and even more, there's literally absolutely no reason to be investing in high beta, high risk stock like this. Now, the question everybody is asking is can Palantir stock continue to rocket up to the moon and go higher and higher and higher? What would that do to the valuation metrics over at Palantir? And what would it do to the share price? We'll talk about that on today's show in the context of the company reporting their Q2 earnings after the bell. What is going on, investors? Hopefully, guys are doing well out there. Time to talk about Palantir, ticker symbol PL. TR, as we said on the jump, shares are absolutely skyrocketing. People are jumping in my comments, acting like it's the first time they've ever seen one of their stocks, a speculative stock, by the way, actually go up. Guys, act like you've been here before, okay? Everybody that has invested for any length of time has had a stock do what Palantir has done. The key is... Will it hold these levels and move higher and continue to outperform? Or is it time to take profit in a name like that? That is what you should be talking about. That is what you should be thinking about. And the other thing you should be thinking about is how you can repeat this. If you're able to repeat this over and over, yes, Maybe you will get a yacht. Maybe you will start driving a nice car. But until you do it over and over and over again, we will assume it's simply a dead cat bounce or beginner's luck. Q2 revenues for Palantir came in at $533 million. That was in line with expectations and was up over 13 or nearly 13% revenue growth year over year. Now, the company also gave us guidance for the upcoming third quarter as well. Revenue expected to be between 553 million up to 557. The previous estimate was right at, like I see a couple estimates, right at 555. So they're kind of straddling that. It's a nice job by this company. And then when I come over here and look at the financials, this, this is a company that it has has kind of reached scale from kind of its operating expense side. And, and, and that's exciting to see with this company. We also got full year guidance as well as this company's, uh, you know, more or less kind of got recurring revenue and, and very good visibility into its product sales. Revenue for the full year expected to be at about $2.21 billion. The prior range was essentially kind of straddling the middle of that. Now we have to keep in mind full year revenue, $2.21 billion on a $38 billion valuation. This is no longer a quote value stock when it was maybe under $10 per share. Now, when we start looking forward with this company, Wall Street has it pegged at kind of like a, a mid-teens grower. That's on the revenue side. Company's going to rapidly kind of accelerate its earnings, but based on the number of shares outstanding, it's really not gonna be that impressive. And so you're looking at paying close to 15 times 2024 revenues. This is price to sales, it's not price to earnings. 15 times sales. And then when you look out to 2024, you're paying about 70 times earnings. So you've got a, a ginormous price to earnings. And look, I don't I look, I don't mind buying high PE stocks, Tesla, Amazon, these types of stocks. I don't mind buying them. Your growth rate does have to match up. And I, I am not sure a forward mid-teens growth rate is going to be enough to hold the shares where they're at. And certainly it's not enough to push the shares significantly higher 
than where they are. We'll talk about that more here in a second, but I do want to look at these financials, which really paint a picture of a very nicely growing company here. Your revenue year over year went from 473 up to 533. Talked about how that was, you know, 13% growth year over year. More impressively than that, look at your total operating expenses. They barely budged from 412 up to 416. Your cost of revenue as well, being more or less a software company, stayed flat as well. So off of $426 million of gross profit, we minus off $416 million of operating expenses. And we've got positive operating income over this company. I'd get excited about that. $10 million of operating income. You start analyzing a number out, give them credit for you know an extra 10, 15% as the revenue increases. And you're looking at what, $40 million, $50 million of operating profit. Uh, but again, again, $50 million in operating profit on a company worth $38 billion, okay? And on top of that, growing at just a mid-teens growth rate, that is all, all of that is a recipe for a stock that is going to get backslapped by the market once. And again, we're in a market right now where freaking like Amazon and Google and Microsoft and Apple and pretty much any stock that has a pulse is up 40 or 50, 60%. Guys, that's not going to last forever. That's not breaking any news here. When we have the pullback, stocks like Palantir are going to get kicked to the curb. So before you get into my comments and celebrate the fact that your Robinhood account has gone from $200 up to $600 because of your all-in rocket emojis into Palantir, keep in mind that that is going to be shaved in half the next correction that we see. Now, I don't know when the next correction will be. Could be a year from now, could be a month from now, but stocks like these is going to get absolutely obliterated in that scenario. Now, the good news is company has really strong financials on the balance sheet side, has a boatload of cash. In fact, the company makes the, the bulk of their profits from just uh, income on the interest on their debt. You see here, interest income just over the last uh, three months was 30 million bucks. For the last six months, it's over $50 million. So the company's doing a nice job, high interest rate environment, company with very little liabilities and almost no debt gets rewarded as they should. Now, when you come over here to the cash flows over at Palantir, here. Wonderful. Really, really solid stuff. Six months ended. You pulled down a, a pretty negative number last year. It's turned positive this year from a net income perspective. Company still is rewarding the shareholders or excuse me, the employees with large amounts of stock-based compensation, which is totally fine and totally kosher at a company like this. Now, what we also got was the company announced that they would be doing a $1 billion share buyback. And, and, and look, I'm not a CPA. I'm not a tax expert by any means. Uh, here's how I think the company is thinking about this. For a six-month period, they're paying their employees through the shares of Palantir, $228 million. They're going to take this $1 billion and buy back the shares so it's gonna offset the stock-based compensation. And this is probably a far more tax efficient way to do this. You're avoiding payroll taxes, I'm assuming. You're avoiding some corporate taxes as well. All in all, I, I don't mind it. There are gonna be some on the bear side that are gonna say, look, a company like this should be a high growth company. They should be investing this $1 billion into R&D. They should be investing it maybe in acquisitions. They should maybe sock it away for a rainy day and, and earn 5% like they have been on their balance sheet. I disagree with that a little bit on companies that really aggressively do stock-based compensation. And this is aggressive stock-based compensation. When your stock-based compensation is exceeding your net income and, you know, is a large, actually a pretty decent percentage of your revenue. So it's like 20% of the company's revenue over the past six months. I don't mind the stock-based compensation as, as a way to kind of more or less offset that. Now, the company is generating large amounts of operating cash flow compared to last year, 97 up to 277. Look, there's reasons why this stock is rallied. It, a lot of it has to do with the fact that the markets, including this stock, were largely oversold into 2020 or 2022. And look, they, they've just had a, a rally since then, okay? I mean, if, if you're in stocks that haven't gone up year to date, you, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not doing things right. Everybody looks like a genius right now in 2023, trust me. But it, it's an asset light business. I tell you what, purchase a property, plant equipment, basically non-existent over the last six months. 
and they're issuing some common stock options. So I, I like what I'm seeing from a financial perspective. Companies scaling up nicely. They're doing a nice job controlling costs. This is exactly what you want to see with this company. Now, here's the deal. There are two class of shareholders as it relates to Palantir. They're the ones that bought when Tom Nash was pounding the table on this thing at 20, 21, 22, $25 per share. They're largely still underwater and they're just hoping to get back even. That is represented here by this volume profile as really what you need to pay attention to on a volume profile is when you have the bars really stick out far. That means you have a large amount of accumulation in those zones. And what you'll notice anytime you see this, and it's not always the case, but anytime you're looking at, at technicals, people confuse it like giving you probabilities. It's more giving you like the possibility of things. And that's actually very valuable as it relates uh, to the stock market. If you, if you look at a stock chart and you say, oh, I don't look at that, it, that's like a real estate agent saying that they don't look at comps and they don't look at prices. You're an idiot. This is just a price chart. It, it's nothing more than that. But what you're going to notice is when you have these large accumulations, it, it's hard for the stock to really break out above it. And you see here as Tom Nash was pounding the table on this stock in like the, the mid 20s, the stock was accumulated during that time, but it never really could kind of bust out above it. And then once it busted below, it, it is a lookout below moment. Now, the same thing occurred down here. You had nice consolidation range with Palantir between, we'll call it maybe seven up to about $10 per share. The stock took like, this is like over a year basically where the stock consolidated sideways, simply could not get above that level. But then boom, once it does, you do have these nice pops. So what this tells me is your upside with with Palantir is back into this consolidation range where the original buyers of these shares that were all hyped up, they're going to get back to break even. They could have been in any number of stocks. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of other stocks over the past couple of years where you would have actually made money. There's going to be a lot of people in Palantir while yes, you've had a nice rally off of the lows. They're just looking to break even on these shares. And so you're going to have trouble pushing higher or considerably higher as it relates to Palantir at these prices. On top of that, you combine it with the fundamentals. If this stock continues to move higher, a 74 P turns into 80, 90, 100. And then eventually you'll have the stock market have a little bit of a correction and stocks like this will be kicked to the curb. Your 14, 15 times forward sales will turn into 18, 19, 20, and these are the very first stocks. I don't have to tell you this. All, most of you experience this. These are the first stocks that get kicked to the curb in that type of scenario. So your upside in Palantir is probably back to this consolidation range, which, you know, look, it's still 25, maybe 30% higher. A stock like this gets kicked to the curb. It's back down to the consolidation area. You're probably looking at about 50% declines in the shares at that point. But look, companies doing a fantastic job as it relates to controlling operating expenses. There are going to be some people that pick on this company that they're not investing in R&D and the business. Instead, buying back the shares after a 180% rally year to date and the stock is overvalued from virtually every metric that you look at, and it's not really coupled with a massively high growth rate, there's going to be people that pick on the stock in that scenario. And on top of that, you do have a large cohort of shareholder that are going to pre create selling pressure up here in the mid 20s. This stock's least path of resistance is actually lower. I know that's gonna make some of you guys cry and whine as your Robinhood account has finally turned positive after you invested in Neo and Lucid and Rivian and all of these hype stocks during 2020 and 2021. Meanwhile, many of the mega cap tech stocks are at or approaching all time highs. Hopefully you guys have a great day out there. We'll be back again later this week. Good luck with your investments.